Alright, so the latest Arrowverse crossover, Elseworlds, wrapped up a few days ago, and holy f was that an awesome crossover. Superman v Superman action, all those Batman related easter eggs, appearances from the 90s Flash and Batwoman, and that Crisis teaser at the end, you know that's gonna be awesome. Oh wait, what's that? You have to be an idiot to like this crossover? Well fuck me, I guess I'm an idiot then, because I loved this year's crossover. Now of course, there's plenty of things we need to break down, analyze, and just talk about in general as far as Elseworlds goes. Like seriously, there's a lot of stuff we need to work out, but definitely one of the biggest things that grabbed my attention was that moment between Oliver and and the monitor towards the end of the crossover. Right after Barry and Kara ran off to slow down time by running around the earth, so I guess we're just forgetting that Barry can already do that on his own, we saw Oliver confronting the monitor about their inevitable deaths caused by them trying to slow down time for some reason. In exchange for a special arrow that he uses to help the two live to fight another day, Oliver apparently trades away something, but we're never actually told what it is. Seriously, what did Oliver give up for these two? You got him to change our destiny somehow. You and Kara changed your destinies, Barry, by being the heroes that you always have been. Damn it, Ollie, I know you gave up something. What is it? Well, honestly, if you go back over to the crossover, you should notice that the writers were basically beating us over the head with the idea that he traded away his own life, to be taken at a later point in time, I guess, in exchange for them to survive the fight against Dr. Destiny. I know I'm dating myself a little bit here, but honestly, the whole situation kind of reminds me of that one Animorphs book, Elfangor's Secret, where the Animorphs were able to travel through time to fight against a time-traveling Yurk, but in exchange, one of them had to be killed off at some point. Anybody else remember that series? It was awesome. Anyways, going back to Elseworlds, we get a ton of hints throughout the crossover that some hero sometime soon is going to have to make the ultimate sacrifice for the greater good. And I don't know about you guys, but I didn't exactly see a ton of those hints being directed at anybody other than the Emerald Archer here. I mean, there was that moment during the conversation between Oliver and the Monitor when we hear the latter mentioning a universal balance and that it had to be maintained somehow if Barry and Kara survive, implying that somebody else is going to have to take their place. The universe is a complex piece of machinery, and balance must be maintained. One change requires another. How would you propose I keep the balance? And of course, because this is the Arrowverse, we get another hint wrapped up around some Oliver and Felicity drama, with Barry talking to Oliver about not waiting too long to start patching things up with Felicity, basically because they never know when one of them's gonna kick the bucket. Some unsolicited advice? <laughs> Don't wait to work things out with Felicity. Our line of work, you never know how much time you got. I mean, come on, they practically spelled out that somebody's gonna die at some point right there. Speaking of, there was also that one time Stephen Amell showed up on the Inside of You podcast and started talking about the possibility of Oliver dying at some point on the show. Uh, you bring up a good point. This is what I have been thinking about. What else does my character have to do? Like, what What else? It, what? Die. That's the only thing left for him to do. The only thing that is left for him to do, and he doesn't have to die to do this, is he needs to leave a legacy because we have all these other shows that exist. So whether Arrow continued on in the absence of Oliver Queen or someone else took up the mantle of the Green Arrow, I think leaving a legacy is the one box that is left to tick for the character. Sacrificing yourself to make sure two major players help save the entire multiverse seems like a pretty good way to get that legacy to me. Plus, all of that's on top of the fact that Oliver dying during the crisis would make a lot more sense out of how we haven't actually seen the guy at all in any of the flash forwards we've been seeing on Arrow so far. Not to mention, Stephen Amell's current contract is only good through 2019, so with the crossover airing around the same time that season of Arrow would be premiering, you'd think that would be the perfect time to kill off Oliver, and after that the CW could just sprinkle in some dream sequences or flashbacks or something to finish out Stephen Amell's contract. So I guess that's it then, right? Maybe we'll see some big fight scene against the Anti-Monitor during next year's Crisis, and they'll make it look like Kara or Barry might die like in the comics, only for Oliver to jump in the way and take himself out in some big spectacle or whatever. And afterwards the CW can officially cancel Arrow if they feel like it. Mystery solved, right? Well, here's the thing. I know it looks pretty obvious that Oliver's gonna be killed off, but I'm almost 100% sure that's not happening anytime soon. I mean, we did hear from Eobard in the first season of The Flash that Oliver was supposed to live to be 86, meaning he must have survived one version of the crisis somehow, so it makes sense that he'd be able to do it again. The history books say you live to be 86 years old, Mr. Queen. Well, I guess the history books are wrong. Plus, one guy giving himself up to save two people? That doesn't exactly make a whole lot of sense. How does one person helping two people live equal out here? Universal balance my ass. Well, as gods go, you're not a very smart one. 
But even then though, even if we did assume that Oliver dies during the crossover, and that it airs around the usual time, we'd be about 8 or 9 episodes into Arrow's 8th season, a time when it makes zero sense to kill off a major player. Especially the main character of the fucking show! And on top of all that, like I mentioned earlier, it just feels like the writers are being way too obvious about Oliver's death here. I mean, yeah, it's not exactly like the CW writers haven't had issues with subtlety before. I am the future Flash. But come on, we're talking about something that's supposed to be happening to the main character of one of the more popular shows in the Arrowverse, on arguably one of the biggest superhero related events ever on TV. And these writers want me to believe that they're telling us a year in advance that Oliver Queen is going to be killed off? Get the fuck out of here. So okay, if Oliver's not getting killed off, then what kind of deal did he make? Well, I know I keep talking about how I'm pretty sure that Oliver's not getting killed off, but just because he's not going away anytime soon doesn't mean that we won't still be seeing Oliver pushing up daisies during the crisis. Honestly, I think we are going to see Oliver die. I mean, like I said earlier, the signs are all there. It'd be ridiculous to ignore everything we've been seeing and hearing, especially in Elseworlds. I'm just saying, I think he'll be brought back at the end of it. Maybe we'll see him die relatively early on in the crisis, with one of these two seemingly getting killed off later to maintain the balance the Monitor was talking about. Probably Barry. You know, for reasons. Now having said that, I'm sure somebody's gonna ask the obvious question, how's he coming back from this one? Well, I mean we are talking about TV shows based on comic books. There's like a billion and one ways Ollie could live to bullseye some targets another day. Maybe he dies relatively early on like I was talking about, and however the writers decide to merge all the universes together at the end somehow revives him, or maybe he could just be replaced by an alternate universe version like they did in Justice 2 or something like that. Either way guys, don't worry too much about Ol' Oliver. I'm sure they'll play up his death like it's this big tragic thing, but then he'll just pop out from somewhere and everything will be fine. But anyways guys, that's my take on what all Oliver's deal with the Monitor was about towards the end of Elseworlds. If you guys agreed with anything I said in this video, or if you have your own theories you want to throw out there, then go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I will see you all next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, then go ahead and click that like button, and if you're new, maybe consider clicking that subscribe button too. I've also got links to my Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and Patreon in the description. You should probably check those out too. And if you want to see more of my content, then you can click the link to my last video. It's right there in the middle of your screen. Alright, and I will see you all next time.